Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Stats Corner with me, Alfie, and of course, as always, Mr. Stats, Andrew Dalton. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Are you well? I am. Well, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> well, in myself, but but, yes. but in the, in football wise, no. Um, yes. yes. Um, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. Haven't we, we have a lot we to have. talk about after another disappointing mm. weekend uh, for Leeds United. Three nil loss at home to Liverpool. Um, yeah, I, I mean, before the game, uh, we talked. We obviously did a, a video for this last week, and we, um, we, we were sort of semi confident, weren't yeah. we? I think because yeah. you know, coming yeah. off the back of three so so results, uh, yeah. you know, we felt a big one was coming. You felt like this could be, you know, a day that would go down in Leeds United history. You beating yeah. Liverpool at home would kickstart our season, but it didn't really go that no. way, did it? It felt very flat, unfortunately. I didn't go to the game because I was down in Wolverhampton uh, watching the women who put quite an excellent performance in the League Cup. Uh, got back on the coach, watched on Sky Go, and the atmosphere looked absolutely immense, as it always does with, with the Legion United fans, makes so much noise. And unfortunately, with the game, it, it felt very flat, didn't it, to be honest with you. We'll come to the sending off shortly, but I think Liverpool are just a, a step up uh, where uh, where we are at the moment. That's no disgrace to Leeds United, of course, because we're second season up uh, from winning the championship in 2019, 2020. And I think there's certainly no panic stations around the club at the moment, certainly not from my perspective. So if you look at the league table, we've played uh, Man United, Liverpool and Everton, who are three of the top four at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> I've also played it away at Turf Moor, which is never an easy place to go. So there's certainly no panic stations, but... Yeah, I think there's certainly work to do uh, for Bielsa this coming week against against Newcastle, of course, which the game will come to uh, very shortly indeed. But I, I just think when you're coming up against the likes of Mo Salah, Diego Jota, uh, Virgil van Dijk, it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's going to be tough for any Premier League side. And mm-hmm. Liverpool are an excellent team, of course, from the Premier League winners in 2019-2020. So, yeah, dis- disappointing day at the office. And as for the red card, which... As we record this, unfortunately, hasn't been rescinded. I can't understand why. It does feel like a little bit uh, of a kick in the teeth. But we've got to get on with it. We've got to dust ourselves down and, and go again for, even at this stage, it's, it's kind of quite a big game against Newcastle. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you, you know, I, th- I actually felt, um, you know, we, we started the, the game OK against uh, Liverpool. I think it was clear from the start that, that they that you know their their class was really mm. shining through, yeah. Um, but you know we had a couple of decent chances. One really good chance uh, yes. of of Rodrigo's, which yeah, you know let's be honest, let's be cynical. Thirty million pounds, yeah, should be scoring from inside the box unmarked. Yeah, um, you know obviously not a great finish there, um, and and that really could have you know because at that point you know probably it was. A bit of that was, you know, being lifted up by the crowd, and you know, it's it, we're back in front of, of fans, and we were on mm. the bounce, and that would have lifted the roof off of Island Road. That would have been heard for miles around. Um, but you know, and then obviously after that, we got a bit of a sucker punch with the the Mo Salah goals, hundredth yeah. goal in the Premier League. Um, but uh, yeah, that that first half um, again after that period, certainly after the goal. Um, we we just didn't we we just didn't seem to to react well enough to that, did we? Yeah, it's interesting with Rodrigo because there's an article in the Athletic today where Barcelona actually looked at him to take him on loan uh, in the transfer window, which would have let Leeds left left Leeds very lightweight uh, up top. Mm-hmm. It's just not quite clicked for him at the moment. He had a brilliant end to the season last season. If you remember the game, certainly at Turf Moor when he scored two excellent goals yeah. in the four 0 victory. It's just not quite clicking for him at the moment. It will do. I don't think they quite know his, his natural position, whether it is in that number 10 role, if it's if it's up front or not. It'll be very interesting to see uh, what Bielsa does team news-wise against Newcastle, and they will find out what about quarter to, six, quarter to seven uh, on Friday evening. But, yeah, you've got to take your chances against Liverpool, haven't you? But you get few and far between. And at the other end, most Salah goes and scores. Uh, as you say, his 100th goal. Uh, for the, in the Premier League, should I say. And then Leeds are kind of chasing the game uh, after that. Then, of course, we come to probably the, the most controversial decision of the weekend, if not just this game, with, with the Stuart sending off. And mm-hmm. I think we'll all agree 
it wasn't a red card. We all wish Harvey Elliott the best of luck getting back fixed. He's a wonderful talent. I think he's been on loan a couple of times. I think Blackburn and, and Fulham spring to mind. And it, it, there was no malice involved. It was actually a good tackle, to be honest yeah, with you, Alfie. And sure. Just, yeah, just, I think it just knocked the stuffing out of Leeds. And then obviously Fabinho goes and scores. And, and Mane, who probably looked like he was going to score all day, to be honest with you, he got the third goal to, to add a little bit of gloss uh, on the performance for Liverpool. And, Disappointing, yeah, but they've got to dust themselves down. But, but obviously, it's it's very early in the season. We've, we've only played four league games. And as I rightly say, we've played four, three out of four teams in the top four. Uh, I just think it's now imperative that they get a result, really. And I, I don't like putting pressure on Leeds early in the season. And uh, it's the first time under BL so that they've gone four league games without a win. And they've obviously gone five. I think you have to go back to the 30s to see. Uh, when they went five without a win at the start of the season. But, yeah, it, it's an opportunity to kick-start the season. It, it's a big week, really, coming up for the football club uh, on the pitch with uh, Newcastle on Friday night, then Fulham midweek in the uh, Carabao Cup. be interesting to see what Marcelo does uh, with his team lineup for that one, but I'm guessing he'll, he'll chop and change that one. And then West Ham. Uh, before finishing the, the this back, back this backlog of fixtures or this log of fixtures, should I say, uh, against Watford? What you don't want to be doing is, is going into that Watford game on the what second of October, uh, looking for that first win of the season. So, mm -hmm. I think it, it's quite important that they go to, to Newcastle and, and, and win really against a side who I'm gonna add the best of sides. I think they've got one point from their first four games uh, in a draw early in the season. So, yeah, it, it's an opportunity. Uh, to try and get three points, obviously live on telly again. Things just haven't clicked for for one reason or another. I'm sure they will. We're, we're, we've mm -hmm. got 34 games left. I'm, I'm not worried. Uh, I know that I've read the this second season syndrome quote. Uh, I don't really look at a league table pr properly until 10, 11 games in when the season does start to take shape. But I think just to get that first win, if it's for any club, not just Leeds, but for any club uh, at the start of a new season, you get that first win, it gets you going, really. And, yeah, disappointing against Liverpool. The lads got a standing ovation. Good to see Dan James make his Leeds United debut uh, on uh, on Sunday afternoon. But, yeah, he's got some uh, interesting team selections to, to make. Obviously, we don't know at the moment the fitness of Robin Cock or Diego Lorente. Uh, and obviously with Pascal suspended, it'll be interesting to see what the options are by the back four. Coops will obviously start uh, 100%. I'm, I'm guessing if Robin Cock and Leonti aren't fit, it'll go probably Ailing and Cooper with Firpo and uh, Shackleton at right back. But options, I think he'll have his press conference Thursday before the Friday game and we'll go from there really. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we've talked about the, the Strouk um, red card a little bit. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, just briefly um, yeah. because obviously, you know, this is a preview show, not a yes. review show. Um, but um, yeah, it, it just, um, I mean, at the time, I remember, you know, absolutely out my seat, what a tackle that was. And, and, yeah. and before, actually forgetting that, you know, just before Fabinho scored that second goal, about about fifty minutes, I think he made yeah. a goal saving tackle, which was absolutely he did. He sensational. Did. He did. Um, well, I mean, I mean, just, I mean, you, you look at, you know, you think you, you know, okay, oh god, you know, we're under the cost here. Lorente's coming yeah. off here, comes Stroke. You forget yeah. how good that kid is. He is oh, genuinely a massive talent. And then obviously that tackle just looked brilliant. And then I, I was confused really at first on what had actually happened. I thought. I thought, oh my God, actually, he's, you know, we've got another player collapsing on the pitch. I thought, this, yeah, oh yeah. God, it's, you know, straight away, I thought, oh no, it's, it's Christian Eriksen all over again, obviously. Thankfully, it wasn't quite that serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just thought the whole thing, um, you know, I, I just think, I, I don't believe Craig Pawson. I, I think that's a complete lie that he always yeah. was was going to give a red card because he didn't yeah. go for a foul even. So how can you yeah. say that? And you know, far not finding the clear and obvious error. I just don't, you know, then all, there's a horde of, of ex-referees, yes. professionals, yeah. Harvey Elliott himself Correct. saying it wasn't yeah. a red because, you know, it was, you know, Pascal comes in from behind. Yes, fine. He's from behind. He's slightly off the floor. It's a dangerous challenge, but, you know, he gets the ball. Correct. And, yeah. and Harvey Elliott brings his foot across to try and challenge for it and it, and it obviously slips under really awkwardly. So, I, I mean, it's... Would would I feel different with if I was a Liverpool fan? I don't know, but mm. from my perspective, that's a really good challenge, and it's only been yeah. given really out of pity or yeah. out of yeah. to, to try and 
you know, level out the game, but I just don't yeah. see it that way. And I think the fact that it's not been rescinded is just completely the, the way the way the FA is. Like, like yeah. we were saying before this, before we started recording, the way yeah. the FA is now, they back referees to the hilt despite having VAR. And I just, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what they're seeing there. I, I think the problem with the appeal is that if they rescinded it. They'd then, they'd then be saying the referee's made an error. And I don't think they want to... I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to read between the lines here. Uh, I, I don't think what Craig Pawson has said is quite right. Uh, I think the, the conjunction, some of the truth in between, I don't think Klopp should have entered the field of play because I didn't no. think managers were allowed to do that. Uh, and unfortunately, we lose a very, very good player for three games. Uh, obviously, we'll see what, what happens with Lorente and, and Robin Cock. But the thing is now, the FA have made a rod for their own back here because if there's a tackle that's very similar to that one that happens in another game later on in the season, maybe this weekend, maybe next weekend, who knows, and they get sent off, they've got to be consistent. That's what's frustrating. Like, remember, obviously, Coops got sent off at City, Man City last season. I can't remember who it was. It was a, very, a tackle... A week later, very, very similar. And I think you've got to follow the consistency levels. And it'd be very interesting to see the reasons why they've not rescinded it. We can only only second guess. Uh, But it it feels a little frustrating. It feels a little bit deflated. Pascal's a brilliant kid. No one can have a bad word to say about him. And it's gutting that he's not going to be available until that, that Watford game in a few weeks' time at Ellen Road. So, yeah, there the cards were dealt, unfortunately, Ralphie. We've now got to get to grips with it and we've got to literally go again. We'll see what he said in the presser this week on, on obviously this we're recording this on Wednesday night. I think the press conference will be tomorrow. Uh and we'll see what the lineup is like on, on Friday night. But it's a game that they've really got to win, to be honest with you, because you don't want to get five games without a win at the start of a new season because then the pressure yeah. so slowly starts to build a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And uh yeah, so we'll come on to the Newcastle game now. Um I think, uh, you know, you look at the the start of the season back when the, mm. the fixtures were released um, and, you know, you're looking at that old, you know, Old Trafford away first and then, um, you know, difficult game against a good Everton side. And then, you, you, but, but you're actually looking at probably, you know, let's be realistic, loss, probably a draw against Everton, beat Burnley, yeah. Yeah. probably lose against Liverpool and then beat Newcastle because they are a club in absolute disarray at Correct. the moment. Um, but what I will say, um, and it's the same with with Anfield. It's the same with quite a lot of stadiums that you never underestimate the power of St. James's Park. Oh, God, no. Because it is... Uh, I mean, when, when Pep Guardiola names that as the most difficult away game he's ever been to, that is when you know they have... It's it's one of those things where, you know, Newcastle have been a club in... in internal turmoil for about a decade now yes they have they've indeed. had they've had historic results consistently yeah that had just seemed to to you know the fans just push the ball into the goal somehow yeah yeah you know, we all remember that arsenal 4-0 coming back to 4-4 and they've beaten man united man city there yeah um so with a game that you we kind of have to win yeah um it's not the most attractive prospect is it to go to Newcastle going, you know, we have to get a result here. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I don't think we'll lose. I find that very hard to believe, mm. but I just think that it might be a lot harder to get a win um, than it might sort of seem because, you know, that they are, you know, there's talks of bust ups between yes. um, yeah. Bruce and Charnley and yeah, um, under 23s oh, players. And yeah, but do you know what? Um, you know, I do not. I, I, I mean, for me personally, because all the mates and Newcastle fans, I hate playing Newcastle. I yeah. absolutely hate it. Um, but you know, we, we surely, you know, I don't want to say it's a must win this early in the season, but mm. you know, surely we, we've got to at least, um, well, we've got to at least get a win here, Sats. Yeah, it's interesting. I've been looking down at Newcastle's results. They, they lost what four two home to West Ham in the opening of the season, then went to Villa Park and got beat two 0 uh, lost in the League Cups, so out of that competition, lost on penalties to Burnley, drew 2-2 to Southampton. That was the one game they probably could have won. James Ward-Prowse, I think, equalised late, late, late on. <laughs> and they went to Old Trafford last time out, got beat 4-1, had the audacity to equalise. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it, 
it's weird because we all know the Mike Ashley situation at Newcastle United. The fans have wanted him to sell the football club. They were very close to selling, I think, to Amanda Stavely a couple of seasons ago. They're a bit, this, a bit of a mess. There's a lot of infighting, but sometimes that galvanises the squad. Uh, when, you, when you've got all that going against you. Uh, I think Callum Wilson might be missing the game, which will probably help Leeds. Uh, obviously, we'll see their team come quarter to seven on, on Friday night. But, yeah, it, it's two sides that probably need a victory, really, just to mm -hmm. kickstart yeah. their season. We know what the fans can be like at St. James's Park. They can be boisterous, boisterous, should I say. They can be loud. You come out of that ground at St. James's Park, it can be very, very loud, and you can hear sort of your tingling in your ears. 50 off that... <coughs> thousand fans the Leeds fans are way way up in the gods uh at the top end of their way to you so yeah it, it, it's a game I don't want to call it a, a six point because it's way too early for that but it's, it's a game that, that both sides are looking to, to get three points basically to kick start the season and a lot we'll see when when the team news does come out on on Friday evening yeah um and yeah you, you, you're right and they, they they seem somehow even under Bruce um I think I don't know whether it's you know they're the kind of the world is against us kind mm. of thing just seems to galvanize them or whether it's just through sheer bloody mindedness yeah. that they managed to get through because they are a very defensive side. Yeah. And um, I think they will probably try and frustrate us. They'll break us up. Um, you know, they'll, they'll probably go for a back five again. That's what they seem to, yeah. to have done. Um, they've got, I think that they have got a few dangerous players though. Um, and I think that's, that's what has, certainly helped them get some positive results last season. St. Maximan is a very hot and cold yeah, player, but yeah. when he's on it, he is genuinely a terrifying prospect yeah, than yeah. any fullback in the league. Um, Joe Willock, I think, is also quality. Um, I'm not worried about Joe Linton. Don't want to don't want to curse it, but I'm not worried <laughs> thanks, about Alfie. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be back here on Sunday um, yeah, thanks, talking, about the, <laughs> talking about the Joe Linton hat trick that yes, is at St. Yeah. James's Park. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, they, it's there's not an easy game in the league, no. I think. Um, you know, I don't know whether it's just me being negative, but I don't think there's a, an easy game, especially when, you know, you're a promoted side mm. coming up into their second season looking to push on. Um you know, everyone wants to beat Leeds. That's that's the thing. When you know, we're not right. one of the big six, but everyone still wants to beat us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be a a tricky one, I think. Um, you know, obviously we had a, a couple of, uh, I mean, well, well, one cracking game against them. Uh, you know, last year against you know, obviously five two at Elland Road, where right, yeah. I think the the tiredness and our fitness really showed yeah. and, and was yeah. that game. And then thought actually the the St James's Park game was probably better felt better i think for yeah. us because we really really had to dig in for that yes we did um because you know that was a really physical game and we knew it was going to be a, an absolute war and you know as liam cooper likes to say we we went to the trenches didn't we um yeah you know and, and yeah. we dug out that result and it always feels a bit better when you've you've kind of um you know you've struggled and you've fought and you've you've kind yes. of fought tooth and nail so i think it's I, i'm going to expect the same again don't think there's going to be a lot of goals yeah, um, I certainly think that we we just need to take our chances. We need yeah. to be more yeah. clinical. Um, you know, if we start to kind of, you know, we'll create more chances than them. We'll have more possession than them. We just have to have that cutting edge. I know that's yeah. kind of it seems an obvious thing to say, but we haven't been doing that enough this mm. season. So, um, you know what? I mean, yeah, we'll we'll talk a little about the team selection. So let's let's say, you know, obviously Strokes banned. Let's say for the sake of argument, Cox still out, which is likely yeah. anyway. Lorente's still out, which again, yeah. hamstring injury. Dunno if that time scale Sunday to Friday is enough for him to get back. Um, you know, where do we you know, what what kind of choices do you think Bielsa's gonna make? Well, also I think if it is that situation, I think you'll have a back for it's whether you, you throw Shackleton in at right back or you go Stuart Dallas at right back. I think for argument's sake, we'll say Stuart Dallas at right back. Just just for the... He, he might not. He might not. He might not have Shack attack in there. So we'll go Dallas, Coops, Ailing, Furpo, obviously Calvin sitting in, in front of the, the back four. Mm -hmm. Then you've got choices, haven't you? So who do you go? Do you go Click in, in there? Uh, Rafinha? In there, you, you, you're kind of running out more. Some Harrison in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, I'm trying to think what you can really do if you do take Strauch out there, if you take Laurenti out there as well. Do you throw Dan James in for his, 
his first start. The, the, there is options there, but yeah, for sake, so we'll go with those four. Phillips, uh, player six. Click, player seven. Rafinha, player eight. Uh, I'm running out of options here. Yeah, I mean it's 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 it is a tricky one, isn't it? I think that back four is is probably what he'll go for if that yeah, is the situation. Yeah. Um, you know, Shackleton's brilliant, but I don't think he'll, he'll tuck yeah. him in at, at right back, and and he's a lot better utilised at, 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 in centre mid. Which, to yeah. be honest, yeah, you know, you look at that back four, and then you've got Phillips there, and then you put in that kind of that Dallas replacement, that box to box midfielder. Yeah. It could yeah. be Shackleton there, but it could, it could. be. It could also be for sure. Um, I think, look, I, I love Matthias Click, and I think Click has actually done really well to to kind of bring himself back from you know last season. Looks, mm-hmm. he looked, I was on the brink of being pushed out to now coming back into his own. Um, but you know it, that defensive side is it's just a little bit lower than, than mm-hmm. what for sure and Dallas has shown, and I don't know if it's worth just putting for sure there. Just a little bit of solidity, a little bit of. You know, it's it's going to be a packed midfield because they'll yeah. play a three-man midfield. Um, you know, a little bit of quality. You know, he can sit back with Phillips if need be, and then maybe put Click at number ten, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously do your, your Rafinha, Harrison, and Bamford. Um, but yeah, it's it's Rafinha, a bit yeah yeah it's um it's it's obviously a big decision to make and it's not an easy one because it's you no. know do you do you gamble and do you move Rafinha inside even though he's not ready to play there uh-huh. give James a start and then do we just try and bully them with attacking options or yeah but then you know risk a little bit of um you being know wide mid, open mid, a bit. Yeah. being wide open exactly so it's it's one of those um I think he probably will put click there um I yeah think he's he's slightly ahead of for sure in the pecking order um I, I have a feeling he's going to stick with rodrigo as well you know yeah um, so do I. to be quite honest with you um i didn't think tyler roberts was awful when he came on on sunday i thought it was back i thought yeah i, thought yeah, it was back. I, I, I didn't think it was his game to be quite hmm. honest with you because you know it's yeah all right it's not a game changing substitution against liverpool but do you know what roberts comes on and he's positive every yeah. time he gets his head up he looks for people and actually this could be yeah you know, this this could be his type of game um so yeah, I mean that that might be something he, he wants to go for, but I don't know. I, I know Bielsa isn't the type of guy to kind of get players off just because of one bad game. No, it's not um, his loyalty. He's, he's, he's loyal, loyal so he, he might stick with Rodrigo again. But you know what we've got to do if that does happen is obviously get behind him, and you know he's he's got the the potential to bring out a class performance. You know mm. he's one of those players, form is temporary, but class is permanent. It's permanent, absolutely. Last season, so. You know, this guy, let's not forget this guy has been in the Spain squad for Correct. Like decades. Correct. And he's been a cha- you know Champions League mainstay. He's been round the block more times than anyone in that squad. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've got a it's just a real big headache, isn't it? Really. You take yeah. one player out and all of a sudden we're in disarray. But I don't know, hey hey ho, that's that's what you've got to do in a, in a 38 game season. Correct. Um so yeah, so so we're kind of not really settled that issue. No, we haven't. Um, it's not but, our job. Thank but you know what? I, I think that back four is pretty much spot on. Um, yeah. If if we're assuming that Lorente's back, which I think is overwhelmingly likely, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously that that opens the door for for Charlie Cresswell to come in on the bench. I know he's Probably, he's featured yeah. there, but yeah. you know yeah. that's quite an exciting prospect. Um. So yeah, so so if that is our squad. You know, a cautious uh, squad, uh, not not threadbare, but weakened. You know, how do you see mm. this game going? And and you know, what what kind of score are we looking at here? Oh God, it, it's two sides that uh, are going into the game out of form. Newcastle one point from from possible twelve leads, two points from possible twelve. It's going to be a tight affair. I can't see that many goals. I don't think it'll be a three or a four. I think it's two sides that need that first victory of the season. I hate making predictions, as you probably well know, because I've not got any right this season. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go for a Leeds win, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 Leeds win. I think it'll be tight. Same again. It'll be a bit like last season. It'll be edgy. I think it'll be nervy. I think if you remember last year, we were holding on quite a bit towards the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Cash has got a brilliant left-footed goal. I'm going to go, yeah, 2-1 Leeds, uh, Rafinha and Bamford uh, to score mm-hmm. the goals and just to kick-start the season. Going into 
a big week, as I say, with Fulham in the League Cup and then uh, another tricky game against the Hammers uh, a week on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna side with you. Yeah, I think it is gonna be a, a really tricky game. I don't think it's gonna be a you know a blockbuster leads are back on the scene kind of thing. I'm gonna go mm. for a one nil, oh, uh, one nil. So we'll keep yeah. a clean sheet as well. Yes, which obviously we haven't done yet, apart from crew. And yeah. uh, you know, and and you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll I reckon Rodrigo will score. You know, I think he'll redeem him. It, it, it won't surprise yeah. you, would it? It really yeah, won't surprise it, you. It really wouldn't. Um, you know, he'll he'll redeem himself, and we'll dig it. We'll dig it out, and then we'll be like, right, fine, we've got the win. Let's go on to to uh, to West Ham. Yes. Um. Yeah. Obviously, as you said, we had I've actually got Fulham in the cup on. We have on Tuesday. Um. So we will be doing a preview for that on Sunday night. Yes. Yeah. Which we will get up for Monday. Perfect. Um, and. Yeah, so I mean that again. That's another um, interesting one uh, where we'll we'll hopefully see Dan James maybe get a start for the Possibly, first time, yeah. if yeah. not on Friday night, depending on what Bielsa wants to do. Correct. Um, and obviously maybe some under twenty threes as well. Yes. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so yeah, so there you are. One nil and two one are your picks for this week. Um, get your bets in. Don't get your bets in at your own risk, please. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's uh, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mr. Stats. Thank and you. We will see you on Sunday evening.